Hi everyone, my name's Michael Devine. I'm the new CHS Bowls convener for Combined High Schools. Uh, I've just taken over from Gavin Holburn, who many would be familiar with. Um, I'm a teacher at Penrith High School in Sydney's western suburbs, um, and I've been involved with CHS Bowls for about 12 or 13 years now. The first main school event that we have is the statewide knockout. And as with every combined high school or government high school, um, they can enter teams in cricket, basketball, netball, um, and bowls is another sport that offers that opportunity. Basically, it's run in local areas to start with, and you only need three players from your school to form a team. Um, it runs in local areas and then regions, and then finally we have the 16 um, teams that qualify for the state finals. So that's a good opportunity to try and encourage, especially clubs with a junior already, to try and get involved in what schools can offer. We run the CHS singles and pairs, which is more for bowlers that are already used to um, playing the game and juniors that, that have a little bit of experience. Um, basically 16 girls and 32 boys go down to Warilla each year um, in June and we run it as as a, just a straight state event. So there's there can be qualifying in some regions and that's organised locally, um, but then CHS runs it as one event down at Warilla. Um, great way for, for students to get a little bit more um, experience and also get used to all the other bowlers from around the state. Um, the third main activity that we have is the CHS state championships. And this is one that clubs could certainly get involved with, which we can talk about later. Um, but basically it's where each region, and we have 10 regions in the state, um, each region chooses eight players and they play two rings of fours across three days in July. Um, we ultimately end up with a champion with Western Region winning last year, Sydney North winning the year before, um, and it, it has been shared around. So that's a re really good competition. From that competition, we'll then pick a state side. Um, in previous years, the state side has gone straight to the, the School Sport Australia Championships. Um, last year, that was against Victoria. Uh, we're hoping to get a couple more states on board. But also this year, um, that team that we choose looks like they'll have to go to a New South Wales All Schools competition um, against a Catholic team, a Catholic schools team. Um, and basically, we'll pick an all schools team from there. So that's a little bit of a change on, on previous years. Um, and the last one's the inter-school challenge, which Bowls Australia know more about and, and are running. Um, but that's something that we're trying to encourage our schools to get involved in. And once again, um, clubs might be able to get involved in that, which we can talk about soon by hosting a local activity for it. If you know that you have a local high school, see if you can offer school sport to them. Um, I'll talk about, for instance, the club that I bowl at up at Glenbrook in the Blue Mountains. Um, I was teaching at Blacksland High last year and we'd take 15 or 20 students down on a Wednesday. Um, I was obviously there, so I was able to run it for them. Um, but they always had volunteers ready to help as well. And kids just played games of pairs, games of triples, got a little bit of coaching, um, got to have a taste of whether they liked the game. Um, and Glenbrook managed to get a couple of juniors throughout the years from doing that sort of thing. So I'd, I'd highly recommend um, school sport as a great avenue, as long as you're willing to, to accept 10 to 20 students there. Um, so that's probably the basic one where you can just work just with one school and just with your local school that would make a difference um, and start getting some new people into your club. Um, other than that, everything that I just talked about in the events that we host. Um, any knockout game, we need a host club for it. So working with any schools in your local area, if you have juniors, make sure you say to them, if there's anything on, let us know. We're happy to host it. Um, there's the knockout. Um, there's singles and pairs, as I said. We run it as a CHS state event at Warilla, but most regions will have some sort of qualifying event. They need a host club for that. The Inter-School Challenge, I know, is looking for host clubs to, to host 
um, sort of the preliminary rounds of that. And you can even run that just with one school and choose one school that goes out of your local area and goes to your regional finals. Um, they're probably the easiest ways to get involved. Other than that, we always need host clubs for our CHS championships and our statewide knockout finals. Other than that, something that's been successful at a few local areas, um, offering gala days either for students or for teachers. Um, we've started to work out that by getting teachers to understand a little bit of bowl, about bowls and to enjoy having a game of barefoot bowls or whatever it might be and having them welcome at the club, they start to think about um, bowls as a better option for school sport and they start to offer it to, to their students. I also mentioned that the Catholic system has now appointed a convener and they're going to start getting into school bowls as well, which is a great thing for juniors. Um, so even though I keep talking about combined high schools and government schools, if you've got a local Catholic school, start to get on board with them, make contact with them. If you've got a junior that you know at your club that goes to a Catholic school, start offering them the opportunity to, to have an involvement in in this, the club through their school. See if you can get sport up with the Catholic school because that's going to be another avenue that we can now start to look at. You don't need as much as you probably think. Um, you need some volunteers. Most of the time you can get away with one or two volunteers. Any more than that's a bonus. If you can manage to have any ex-teachers that are retired, that's a great avenue because they understand the school system, but it's certainly not a necessity. The only thing that your volunteers really need, or two things, they're working with children's check. That's sort of a, a mandatory requirement to be able to work with school children, but you can get a volunteer one for free if, uh, if you haven't got one already. And the other thing is a little bit of patience and willingness to work with the kids because sometimes they'll be kids and possibly do things that, that you're not used to at the club. If we're, if we're using a club and trying to encourage a new set of bowlers um, from our school, it might be just three end shootouts, five end games, sets play, things like that. And the kids generally can sort of concentrate for that long and then like going from one game to the next rather than, than the longer format of the game. But that's all you need. And as long as you've got someone willing to do it, um, most schools are looking for that option of something a bit different and looking for that option of we've got Wednesday afternoon sport or Thursday afternoon sport. We want to offer as many different things to, to our students so they can all find something. So get in and have a go and I'm sure your local school will be happy with that. In terms of contacting people for further information, um, I'm going to be your first port of call. Anyone who wants to, um, my email uh, is going to be included at the end of the presentation as well as my mobile number. If you've got any questions at all, if you want to get involved, if you want to offer to, to host something, definitely get in touch with me um, and I'll do my best to, to help out. Um, as well as that, we'll put the New South Wales School Sport Unit website um, up at the end of the presentation. It's the first link, basically. It will have my details, but it also has all of the details for regional conveners. Um, if you can't find your regional convener, um, ask me, get in contact with me and I'll get you in touch with them. But your regional convener decides where the, the local level of sports is based. So if we're talking about hosting early rounds of the knockout trials for the CHS championships, the singles and pairs at regional level, that's something that your regional coordinator does. And as I said, we've got 10 regions, so each one has its own regional coordinator. Um, I won't go through all the names, but they are up on that website or the easy way is just to quickly get in touch with me and I'll point you in the right direction there. Um, other than that, your best option, go to your local school. Find someone that can go to their local school. You need to talk to either the sports organiser or the principal and just see what they want, see what you can offer and see if you can make a match there. And as I said, most of the time schools are willing to give new things a go because students like to try different things. So either come through me or just go straight to your local school and see what they say.